uh, baby, look, the girls don't know. This trip is to air out all y'all grievances and come together. Y'all ready to talk about it? Get the music. Oh, yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. I drop a player like it's nothing. It ain't working out. Now, no debate up for discussion, bitch. I'm walking out. I'm walking my now is money. I ain't loving. Let you toss it out. Flip my weave and walk it out. Look how I just bossed it out. Now, come on, baby. Why you bugging? We can't talk it out. I keep it moving. I ain't tripping. Lost another spouse. I'm just a boss. It's in my blood. No, I won't scream or shout. Grabbing my keys. Cause oh yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. Back with another video, and we're here to discuss Married to Medicine Season 9 or 10 episode. I'm going to let y'all know down there in the comments, girl, or in the description. Listen, I am so sorry I'm not at home at the studio. I actually spent the night at a friend's house, so I couldn't get home on time. And I didn't want to have like four and five doggone reviews to do after all of this. But let's get into this week's episode because it starts off a little bit shaky if you get my drift. So the episode opens up. They over there eating. You know, Eugene done made some good ass lasagna. So the girls is over there eating and uh heavenly ask Anila how she's getting along with this dog on break in. So now Anila says it's a it's a time, but we did go ahead and hire a PI. And the PI is basically suggesting that they suggesting that they take polygraph tests and that if but that you guys take the polygraph test as well. Now, uh, before she could finish the words, Quad was like, I'll take one. Now, this leaves Simone very, like, perplexed. Because she was like, why would you need to take a polygraph test? You don't even live out there, girl. Like, what are you doing? And, you know, Quad was like, well, no, I just want to be exonerated from a person who may have, you know, information. I don't have any information, so I don't mind taking a polygraph test to show that. Um... I feel like Quad already had that conversation with Anila. That's why she was so quick to jump on and say, yeah, I'll take it. And then I also feel like Quad is doing what anything it is to get back at doggone Heavenly. Not Heavenly, doggone uh, Toya. Because you know they don't like each other. They never really did, you know, see it for each other. So I feel like this is just Quad's um, opportunity to jump on or kind of get Toya's, get in her ass, if you make sense. But then on the flip side, Toya, I ain't even going to lie. You're looking very, very, very suspicious, fat. I'm sorry, you looking too suspicious for me. I don't really know how I care, how I feel about that. But um, and then she immediately talking about I'm not doing that. Well, well, well. If you ain't got nothing to hide, what's the big problem? I don't know, but she said she ain't doing it. But you know, Anila's whole thing is is like, listen, Toya, I don't know how we got here. How did we get to where we are like this beefed out with each other? Now, this prompts Toya to say the heifer done lost her mind. They do all the flashbacks and all of that stuff that they've been having going on or whatever. And it's basically her poking fun at their financial situation. Toya, you are, you you broke rich. You know what I mean? And that's all right. See, and broke rich is basically when somebody looks rich on the outside, but they ain't got it on the inside. A lot of people are like that. You broke rich and that's what people are going to poke fun at. Granted, it's getting tired and delayed, but I'm going to need you and Eugene to get them finances back up so we won't have to talk about this no more. Stop living outside your means. Stop doing all this other stuff. Take care of your finances so you could have something to leave your children because right now you're going to leave your children in debt. Figure out your financial stuff. And Eugene need to put his stuff, his balls down and say, it ain't happening, period. But we know that ain't going to never happen. But anyway, so yeah, um, she doesn't understand why Anila don't understand why they not cool. Well, honestly, I don't really give a damn why y'all not cool. But if we're going to go down this rabbit hole, it's a relationship or resuscitation trip, whatever the hell it is. Let's just go ahead on with it. So now, so basically Anila's whole thing was, listen... The only reason I really needed or felt some type of way is because when I called y'all on that doggone barbecue, y'all was grilling me, giving me the third degree like as if I was lying or something. Like, I had to, uh, I, I do want to do a polygraph test. Um, she straight out asked, do, does anybody at this table think that I would do something like this and set my own house up to be robbed? And here come Toya. I don't know what you would do. I don't know you like that. Oh, girl, look, y'all getting on my nerves. I, I really just feel like, 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 like Dr. Simone said, Dr. Simone said, girl, these two just goes at it. That's just what they do. Two bulls in the China shop, child. And it's, it's really getting tired and delayed. Um, quiet. Can we get your ex-husband up on the show so we can see what's going on with him and his newfound marriage to medicine? Or get you a medicine to be married to, number one. But number two, I don't know. Toya just does it. She just blows me. I don't know. But anyway... 
Toy and Quiet get into it back and forth. We already talked about that. Uh, Dr. Jackie said they just, not Jackie, Simone said they just holding on to BS because that's what they do. And um, basically, Heavenly pulls Anila aside. They pull Anila aside to go to the doggone living room and in comes Contessa and her husband pulling up in the doggone snow. Um, I guess they had just got off work. They had been working late or whatever the case may be. So they pull up and right to business. Well, first of all, before we go right to business, baby, Dr. Scott said, I'm going B-line to the lasagna and Z-line to the bed. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Hell, Heavenly Holland, I know why they late because they was either fighting or fucking. She said either one, uh, Contessa be beating St Dr. Scott's ass, but uh, that's why they late because that's all they do is fight and fuck. I said, well, I'll be damned. It sounds like a fun, toxic relationship. But, um, so they sit down and Dr. Jackie said, we ain't having no fun. We ain't doing nothing, nothing until we repair these relationships. This stuff is getting out of hand. No fun. Now the girls is like, what? <laughs> like, well, I said, how you gonna tell people not to have fun? Dr. Jackie, but y'all know how she is on her little trips. Stop acting crazy. So, um, just get to it. Just get to it. So then, um, all right. So after, uh, Kwa says, look, we've been fighting and we still here. Everybody's cool. And and um Toya jumps up and was like, No, not true, boo boo. Uh Dr. Jackie starts to let them know, listen, we need to clear the demons. We need to get it all out. Let's just make it let everybody be transparent about what's going on. Um, Toya goes in to start saying that, you know, she needs to clear the air because she don't like being around people that she's gonna have to defend herself from. And she don't think nobody wants to do that. And they played a flashback of um her getting into a big old altercation or whatever it was with um, uh, Audra. Audra, that's her name. So my thing with this is, I, I feel, I don't know, because Toya is just making it seem like, you know, Audra just like provoked all of this. Ultimately, um, so this is how Toya phrased it. Toya basically says, listen, when you chest bumped me, you put me in a position to have to defend myself. And that was not cool. Like, where do you think this come from? And then like Audra said, well, ever since I came around, it's been unwarranted comments about me, my appearance and all this stuff. You, you're basically trying to be a label whore and down me because I don't do the labels. So they played the flashbacks for that. And honestly, I feel like they shouldn't, it shouldn't have came to blows. It should, none of this should have came to blows. Let me, let's be clear. It should not have come to blows. However, it did. And I feel like it's because it was a whole bunch of tension and stuff going on. Uh, Toya said, you looked up all my stuff and like, what's going on with that? Why would you look up all my stuff? And she couldn't even allow the girl a chance to respond because Dr. Jackie had to tell the girl, let the girl respond. On the other side, Dr. Martin and Cecil was over there playing girl pool. They playing pool and it looks to me that both of them is trash. But when they put a bet out there that if whoever loses is going to do 10 push-ups in the cold, I guess Dr. Martin spiced it up and he actually ended up winning. They calling him a pool shark, Dr. Cecil, Dr. Cecil. I always trying to make him a doctor girl. But Cecil said, listen, I ain't no pool shark. I ain't even a, 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 a pool fish. I'm just basically trash. <laughs> so at least he was good at acknowledging that. So now on the other side... Basically, uh, Toya recants that fight she had with Mariah. I remember that. I remember the very first season of this show. I was there. I watched it. And I remember that fight she had with Mariah. And it brings Toya to tears because Toya was like, listen, after that fight, like, I really was distraught and, and messed up behind that. She said, because I didn't want people to think that I was a bad mother. And most importantly, I didn't want people to think that I wasn't right for Eugene. So there we see that there's an issue with Toya's confidence with her man. Maybe his mama must have told him she's a gutter rat. Ain't she from Detroit or something like that? She probably was like, that hood girl, why is you messing with her? Whatever the case may be. But she, her image was really tainted. And she said she, put, she promised herself she would never put that put herself back in that type of position. I understand that, but you know, mistakes happen. Mistakes literally happen. And I don't understand why Toya would be getting held to the fire. You know what I'm saying? When everybody else ain't, it just don't make sense. But, um, yeah, I mean, Toya, I'll, I'll say this. I appreciate Audra taking that and saying, you know what? 
that happened to you nine years ago, I can learn from that. Because Toya ends up apologizing. And I think that it was warranted. She should have apologized because I don't like the way she apologized, though. She hollered, oh, if what I did provoked this. I hate when people apologize and say, if. Don't do that. Just apologize. Just say I was wrong. I messed up. And leave it alone. Don't say I'm sorry if or I apologize if. Say this is what happened. Acknowledge what happened. And then move on. Don't tell me if. I don't need to hear that. But Audra took it in stride. Shout out to Audra. Audra took it and was like, you know what? I'll accept the apology. Now, Dr. Jackie, instead of taking one and leaving that for the night, she decides to have Contessa in Heavenly. Well, she told her to address whoever it is she feel like she need to have an issue with or she had an issue with because she was very close to somebody in the group. Now, Heavenly looking over there like, Lord have mercy. Girl, Contessa said, look, sometimes you just got to leave it alone. I've been working all day. I ain't got time for this. Look, I, I just want to have a good time. Everybody else agreed. Toya was even like, shit, we could at least put on pajamas and got by the fireplace before we started all this work or whatever. And again, Dr. Simone was right. She said, listen, yeah, she need to take the dub with Toya and doggone Audra and call it a night. Because that right there, it never works out. And they played the flashbacks. And listen, my favorite... Contessa line getting into it with doggone heavenly is you shut the fuck up heavenly girl I love it I love it I love it I love it. every time she say it I mouth it with her you shut the fuck up heavenly I am here for it but yeah let's just let's just call it a leave it alone you know what I'm saying all right, so we're waking up. It's the next day. Uh, Dr. Jack is living and feeling good in her skin. Uh, I love that Heavenly called Laura and asked Alora, should she bother her daddy while he in class? And Laura said, no, leave that man alone. I'm here for it, Alora. Um, but we go downstairs. Eugene, Cecil, and Toya are washing dishes. Now, Eugene feels some type of way now. Because Eugene's whole thing is, now, hold up now. I don't mind, you know, cooking because that's my happy place. But I feel like they could at least dog and wash these dishes. You know, y'all ain't going to use me up. Hell, Toya was like, that's what I'm saying. That's why we be getting hotel rooms because my man, they going to use him up to cook. Well, first of all, Eugene, you shouldn't cook so good. And then secondly, yes, I'm with them. Everybody else should have pitched in. He should not be washing dishes from the night before if he was the one who cooked. Now, personally, me, I cook and clean at the same time because when I sit down, I ain't getting back up unless, unless it's to put my plate up. But other than that, that's just me. But I get it. When you're cooking for a large party of people, you do need that help. You absolutely need that help. So I'm here, I'm here for with Eugene being upset about that. And they really need to look at that. So now they go outside. Uh, well, Audra and her husband is in there excited about their little bundle of joy. She says she's feeling pregnant. Her boobs feel heavy, even though it ain't no milk. Her husband tell her, you look about 10 minutes pregnant. I like the little cute banter back and forth or whatever. But they end up going outside to take pictures. And then here comes Toya. Oh, we didn't even know y'all was out here. Listen, Audra was like, we've been cool for 15 minutes. And here she go. I ain't gonna lie. For me, I need to, oh, uh, we need to crawl back. We, we're not just jumping back in. We need to crawl back. That's just me. And I don't know, maybe I'm petty like that, but I need to crawl back in that space. We're not just marching on in like the saints. You know what I mean? But uh, everybody's outside. Dr. Jackie's, t uh, she done already planned the boys trip, child. Talking about because when, when they plan trips, they get in trouble. So Dr. Jackie said, y'all can go down there to the white man's bowling alley. Ain't no liquor. Ain't no bitches. It's just bowling in y'all so i'm listen they do go out to get the wings as they say uh so i'm here for it dr jackie but you can't stop these men from getting the wings they love the wings that's what they're gonna do so um contessa comes out no no jacket on and everybody's in all you know black people we put jackets on when we go outside all they need is a breeze we're gonna at least put a little sweater a little cardigan on or whatever but everybody's looking at uh contessa coming outside with no jacket on trying to figure out what world she was from and uh it was time for the guys to go so the guys get in the doggone van they're going down there to go bowling uh, they actually do the bowling, and Dr. Martin is killing it again. Cecil claimed he was killing it, but that ain't what I saw. But he said he do it all. Him and Dr. Simone in the dog on confessional talking about, yeah, because he do it all. Bowling, football, basketball. I say, girl, look, if ain't nobody going to hype you up, your husband and your wife going to hype you up. So, girl, yeah, I'm here for it. Now, we get back to the house, and Dr. Jackie has hired a, a spa to come and do an in-home spa thing. And I think they want to do some wraps that's supposed to relieve or release some tension. 
or something like that. That could be fun. Listen, I love spies. Oh my God, I love spies. I love it. 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 I wish I was there to get that spy. You have no idea. But uh, on the flip side, so Toya is upstairs and I guess her and Anila back cool, like cool, cool. And Anila say, you know, why are we up here drinking and acting crazy? This is what I miss. I miss doing this, you know, and she gets emotional. She says making her emotional because that's what they used to do. That's how they used to give it up. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Toya don't understand why she feeling like that ain't, you know, she don't, she don't understand why Anila don't understand why they not cool. Because you did bring... Zayda, what her name is, Zayna, to that doggone party, and um, you know that girl was out there spreading these bad rumors about me, and Anila feels like she was set up, she said, because that girl called me the night before and was like, I'm already invited, let me just roll with you, she feels like she was being set up, she was, Um, I believe that, this is what we know, Quad invited Zayna, period, why would Quad invite Zayna if she already know that Zayna's around here spreading this rumor? Now, Anila, if you were slit, silly and slow enough to walk into it and get set up, then it is what it is. Because that's basically what happened. You did get set up, and I believe the setup was between Quad and uh, the girl Zayna. Because I don't understand why she needed to come with you. She could have walked in on her own invite. She didn't need you to come escort her in the party. I didn't understand that, but it was to make it look like it was y'all two against Toya. But now on the flip side... Uh, what's your name, Anila? You were buddy buddy in in that BS with Zayna. You didn't separate yourself from Zayna once y'all got in there as far as like that conversation. You was there with her, so you kind of gotta take the L on that. That's just me. All right, so we back. Basically, uh, Anila's trying to plead her case saying, look, I was set up. I didn't know anything about this. Like, do you understand that this stuff was orchestrated without me? And so Toya understands that, you know, Quiet probably had something to do with it because she know how she get down. But she feels like, Anila, you can't be that slow, not fat. You got to know what you're doing is like, you know, stop letting people use you because that's basically what it boils down to. You letting people use you. Um... Anila, you do. You do let people use you. You are slow. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, you ain't that slow. You ain't that slow. Uh, Toya's whole thing is, I know it was orchestrated between Anila, Quiet, Zayna, and she even threw Heavenly in there. And I ain't gonna lie. I don't think Heavenly had nothing to do with that. I really and truly don't. I don't like that she's throwing Heavenly name in there. I can see how it looks, but I don't, I just don't get that Heavenly is over there like trying to ruin something for Toya like that um I thought Heavenly was doing a good deed but it's Heavenly who knows what she what the real reasons for be for her stuff but I thought she was doing a good deed by saying look girl before you get blindsided them people about to come up and say you've been sleeping with them people husbands down there in the streets so um but I mean I guess when you on the defense you blaming everybody you trying to find anybody or basically you don't know who to trust and I, I would like for Toya to understand that on the flip side with Anila. Because Anila's house has just been robbed. Like Anila said, listen, it was two days before me and you got into it. And the next thing you know, my house is getting robbed. It, you got to understand it from my perspective, the way it looks. And I am all here for that. It makes sense. But, you know, Toya's whole thing is she doesn't want them to think that she's even capable of that. Like she done left the hood stuff back in Detroit, child. But it's just like... Uh, the optics of it, just like you want Anila to understand your optics, you got to understand Anila's optics. It's the same damn thing. Like, I'm confused as to why they confused at this point. You know what I'm saying? It's the same doggone thing. Period. Dot. But uh, I feel like they'll get it together. They'll come together and figure that part out. But they're just going to have to basically have that come to Jesus. But it, it makes Anila emotional. And she gets up and hugs her and was like, you know, I miss you. And I guess they back cool or whatever. But Toya lets her know that, baby, I was watching your house. And I noticed you was gone. I was counting the days. And I'm sitting here going, my spotty senses would have been tingling again. How the hell is you watching my house? Girl, she probably was watching it before. But we don't know, allegedly. Anyway, so now on the flip side, the guys finish up bowling. Uh, team Dr. Eugene wins, and they order some wings. Now, as they order in these wings, they have a sit-down, and uh, they bring up the whole robbery thing. Dr. Karen was like, listen, I just wanted to bring this up because it's been said that, you know, I allegedly, my, me and my wife has had something to do with our stuff being robbed, and I know the women do this, and the women say that, but... That's something we need to clear up. Now, here comes Cecil. Like, oh, Lord, here we go. 
We really didn't have to bring this up. No, you did. Because like Dr. Eugene said, you know, I feel like I've heard it from other people that, you know, that my my wife and my name came up in that suspect list. That ain't something we'll do. Y'all give off suspect, uh, Cecil, not Cecil, Eugene and damn Toya. Y'all act like y'all suspects. Ain't nobody even asking y'all to think like or be a suspect. Y'all act like y'all suspects. So I don't understand why y'all don't understand why people think you a, sus you a suspect. Make it make sense. But um, Dr. Kieran cleared it up and said, listen, child, I ain't never said your name. My wife ain't never said your name. And then Cecil jumped in and was like, but the post she made did kind of come off like she was blaming somebody. No names was, was said. But Kieran wants the dog on squash it. He said, let the women do the women. I'm We gonna think like men over here. However they think is however they think. Let us just make sure we're good. We don't want this energy to uh, infiltrate or penetrate the dog on men's group. I'm with Cecil. Cecil says that um he believed that this is sincere and that they ready to move on. But he said one thing about Dr. Karen, he gonna ride with his wife. And see, I caught that that subliminal. Dr. Uh, Simone said, talking about, I wish I my husband, uh, you know, rode for me like Dr. Karen ride for his wife. I'm talking about that's what you want, baby. Yes, that's what she wants. Let that yes, that's what she wants. All right, so we come back to Toya breaking up them people dishes, talking about just sending her the bill. Girl, y'all can barely pay the ones y'all got. And then daddy arriving. Hey, daddy. Daddy arrived. You know, Heavenly could smell her man. So she was able to go greet him at the door because she could smell daddy coming in. Daddy comes in, says hi to the girls. The girls are like, if you want to go meet the guys, they out there bowling. Daddy say, I ain't got time. I just want to lay my ass down. So now, you know, Heavenly... Takes him on to the room so he can go lay down and get comfortable. Um, and then the girls go upstairs and get changed for this doggone spot day. So, okay, cool. They go change Toya again with the label shit and with all the, the elitist stuff that she has. Talking about, I wish we would have had house shoes to go with these robes. That's why uh, Audra was chest bumping your ass. Just be happy with what you got, girl. You the broke his out of all of them people up in there. Be happy with what you got. You should have brought your own goddamn house shoes. So now uh, they go downstairs. They do the doggone spa. Or they are getting ready to do the spa. And Contessa's titty popped out. Now this is where we get reminded that Simone told her she should have went a size bigger. She got double A's. Girl, I thought they were talking about batteries. But I'm with Simone. If you're going to get something, go go hard or go home. Don't, don't half step it. You know what I'm saying? But amazingly, Contessa has an amazing body. Like... Them titties, they must be great because all the girls is crushing on them. Her titties was out. Her cooch was out. You know, she sat on the couch and got a foot rub from Jackie and doggone Toya. Dr. Simone was sitting over there in awe because she said, I've known Dr. Jackie for the longest out of all these girls. And I ain't never seen her do that. But maybe it's her secret girl crush on doggone um, Contessa because we all have that. Listen, now from Heavenly saying that her and uh, what's his face? Her and Dr. Scott, all they do is fucking fight. And then Contessa sitting over there talking about once you commit, you commit. They definitely swing us. And I feel like I might have a girl crush on doggone Contessa child at this point. They shouldn't have blurred out the titty. But anyway, yeah. So that's where we at with that. So now the girls are doing that. The guys come back in the middle of Contessa getting uh, with her legs cocked wide open, getting a, a foot rubs by Toya and Dr. Jackie. And uh, they, well, Dr. Scott, did you at least orgasm? Did you orgasm? I said, they swing us. They definitely swing us. But they sit down and Dr. Curtis, Dr. Curtis, why am I giving people doctor names that ain't doctors? But Curtis asked Quad if she getting hot over there in that burrito of a doggone uh, setup she had. And like Quad said, yeah, I would say take off my clothes, but they already are. But then you get in your confessional talking about you shouldn't be asking me that Quad. Tell me, I need you to go over there by Jackie. Quiet. If you felt like that, that should have been your response. We don't want to hear it. And Curtis, stop asking these other women about if they naked and hot and all that. That's what got you in trouble the last time. Now, see, next time, Dr. Jackie ain't going to take your ass back. Stop doing it, okay? Because this is just getting out of hand. But, um... All right, so it's time for dinner. Uh, Dinner and a surprise, I guess. 
uh, Simone calls her son. He's over there dog sitting. She says she's going to pay him handsomely. Contessa calls home to her daughter Lauren and asks if she liked her outfit. She said it's average at best. And Heavenly is over there having a conversation with Daddy saying that she's, at, she's actually at peace with Contessa. Like, you know, she's good. Daddy says, listen, I feel like this is a weekend trip of fun. Arguing should be completely off limits. Let's just have a good time. Um, I'm with daddy. I'm with daddy. Let's stop arguing. Let's figure this stuff out. I know y'all was friends and all this and all that, but let it, let it, let it subside, y'all. We got a lot going on. Let's just enjoy the dinner and the time. So now they all goes down for dinner and Cecil lets everybody know that he beat the shit out of the other team in doggone uh, bowling. But we come to find out uh, he did that because he said Toya wasn't giving him no sex. Now he gets back and says, listen, Toya really thinks she like her freak number is this high, but she really not. I'm probably more freakier than her. I done had sex in the lab and in this place and in that place. And Toya feels some type of way because she was like, yeah, you had sex all these places, but not with me. Well, you know, that was when he was single. And that's what Dr. Karen said. See, when it's new, you just be trying to really enjoy it a little more or whatever. But Toya ain't trying to hit it. And hell, Dr. Karen, what is you saying? Because even doggone Anila was like, so you saying I'm not new and I'm not excited and I'm not fun? And he was like, yeah, you know. Girl, no. they don't. After they getting that cooch for a long time, girl, it's just cooch. They don't be caring. That's the guy down the street. But, um... Yeah, Toya, the problem is you making it seem like y'all just, you just too much for Dr. Eugene. And Dr. Eugene is around there saying, no, he's too much for you. Quiet as it's kept. But you will try to come back and say, I gave him something this morning. But what that had to do with the bowling alley? I'm just saying. But uh, anyway, so they announced that they, after two or three courses come out, they announced that there will be a surprise. Well, Simone, Dr. Simone does. There will be a surprise. And this surprise will help them to better communicate. And it will also help them to have better sex lives. Now, we all know Dr. Jackie is the sex queen. The vagina queen and the sex queen. I'm trying to see how I can get... Whatever it is, Dr. Jackie is packaging. And I don't even really need it because the girls do what the girls do. But, yeah, I'm here for it. So, we'll see you on the season finale next week, girl. Listen, I, I was here for this episode. This was a cute. This was a bop. This was a cute little bop. Um, Anila and Toya being back cool, I feel like it's short-lived. They're going to be back beefing again. I just see it. I feel it and I see it. They'll never be the way they were, if you ask me. Uh, Contessa and Heavenly... That's something that's going to come back around, but it, maybe they'll get it together next episode. Who knows? Uh, Heavenly, not Heavenly, Contessa, I will say this, though. Don't put your shit out there if you don't want nobody to talk about it. And then, uh, Heavenly, you got to know what's on and off limits when it comes to your friends. Period. I would never get on the, on the doggone show and talk about my best friend and her business. Period. I mean, if y'all knew her. You know what I mean? So that's just me. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all think this surprise gonna be. And also let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode. This is the episode before the season finale. Wow. Time really has flown. Uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow me on TikTok and I will see you hoes later. Bye. Mr. Carroll. How you give the voodoo doll time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo doll is? That nigga you just had up here.